These 48 hours in Cinque Terre still feel like a highlight reel. Gelato, limoncello, spritz, pesto pasta. It's about to be the best day of my life. After lunch in Pisa at the halfway point in our commute from Florence to Rio Maggiore, we arrived in what must be the most beautiful train station in the world. We were greeted at the train station by our Airbnb host, who proceeded to route us through the cliffside streets to our accommodation for the next two nights. Let's check out our place. Both the bedroom and the living room have this gorgeous panoramic view of Rio Maggiore, where we are staying. You can see the water and all the beautiful buildings, the main street. We have a kitchenette right here. I think Garrett and I are gonna maybe try to cook dinner here tomorrow night, take a little break from eating out. Um, we have a full shower. They can't argue with this setup here. I mean, the views, the location, everything is perfect. This view is really calling to us. So we're gonna go check it out. Let's go. Lauren taking a photo of our apartment so we don't get lost. Such an adorable town. So we came to Cinque Terre, stupidly without cash. Most of the places here only take cash, but this could be our last hope. I think I found an ATM. All right, so the ATM had cash. Now we're good to go and explore the city. Right outside the train station, there's an information point behind me, which is where we bought our Cinque Terre card. Essentially, it's like a pass to be able to use the trails here in the National Park, as well as board the train in between the cities. So we bought one day's pass, and it was about 37 euro, or a little over 18 euro a person. So not too bad, but that allow us to be mobile. I got this little magnet for three euro because it's cute and it reminds me it's the same color as our little VRBO. So it's gonna be such a cute. Doesn't it have fruit on it though? It has a little fruit stand on it, which is where Garrett buys all of his bananas, so. And it reminds you of me. Let's go check out the marina. I think they're doing boat tours today because uh, those waves are looking a little aggressive. Look at that. They're just blindsiding people down there. Oh my. That life raft would save you. Um, so we're gonna grab some snacks and bring them down here for a picnic. Uh, but those rocks that just got demolished by the wave is where we were gonna sit. I think when the weather is nice, people line these rocks and enjoy what should be a sunset. But I don't think we're going to get either of those things today. Ciao, buon appetito. Buon. Right, just picked up the seafood cone. Not normally my thing. I typically don't uh, like things with legs. I don't like my food. Okay. Looks at me. It is incredibly fresh. So they basically pull it out um, of the refrigerator where they're keeping it, chop it up, throw it in the fryer, all right in front of you. So super quick, super easy. Um, gotta give it a taste now. Looks scary, but it's actually delicious. It was the mix and it was all for seven euro. Yep. Brought our seafood to the sea. Is that a sardine? I think it's a sardine. I think it's probably, it's either a sardine or an anchovy. coming for our food. Hope you enjoy that, buddy. I just got attacked by a seagull. <laughs> One of my food, he got a lot of my cone. Cheers. I was expecting like a clink, but it's like a group, 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 don't break it. So our place is like literally right there. That's our door. And we walked down, we walked past this place and after going through the whole town, this is where we ended up. The crowd here is super fun. The staff is super fun. Doing. Oh no, don't do it. I can't take you anywhere. Mm. I'm supposed to go to dinner, but sometimes the aperitivo is so good that you just don't leave. But we spent way too long here.
since we're in this village here, we decided let's go to the supermarket, grab some food, and just put together a little bit of breakfast to give us some fuel before we go hiking today. So we're really excited to chow down, enjoy the view together, and then um, head on with our day. And we have fresh focaccia. We are staying in Rio Maggiore, which is the farthest south of the five villages here in Cinque Terre. We were hoping that we were going to be able to hike from here all the way to the end and see all five villages on foot, but unfortunately there were some landslides and the first two parts of the four-part trail were closed. So we're going to take this train. It's very nice. It's included with your Cinque Terre Pass. So this is where we're staying in Rio Maggiore. This route and this route are the ones that are closed, so we're going to train. Way out here to Monte Rosso, and then we're going to hike to Valanza, and then hike to Corniglia, train to Menorola before we come back home to Rio Maggiore. We've been walking around. We're going to go find some coffee before we head on a hike to Vernaza. Uh, we've been exploring the city a little bit. Yeah, there's quite a few more shops, um, restaurants, places to get coffee. We're here early, but it kind of looks like everything's being set up. You can see all the tablecloths going out. Um, so our mission is just to find a kind of chill place with coffee and a bathroom. We are caffeinated, we've got water, and we have empty bladders. So we are ready. Let's start this hike. So we are leaving Monterosa now on the trail. We are headed to Vernaza. It's about a three and a half kilometer hike and it's supposed to take about a hour and a half. But it's supposed to be moderate, we'll see. The cool thing about the trail is it's very narrow, lots of stairs, easy to walk. The problem is it's single file so you can very quickly bunch up and then you want to stop and take a photo but you know if you stop, you'll stop 50 people. So we pulled off on this little area, kind of let some people pass. It's the climb. There's two guys up here with an accordion playing music. Right when you get over, it's like a garden with uh, lemon trees and orange trees, and it's a beautiful view. And they're playing this music. It's like a celebration for getting to the top of all of those stairs that never seem to end. But <laughs> it seems flat right now, so we're going to enjoy it while we can. Taking the views, absolutely gorgeous. Far, I think I actually enjoy it more than the hike that we did from Fiera to Ia in Santorini, Greece. But we'll give our final verdict at the end. We are exploring Vernassa. We are just kind of wandering through the city, getting a feel for it. Kind of our first impressions, or at least mine so far, is it has like some of the prettiest views we've seen. It's kind of like noon, so everyone's out and about, and it's pretty busy, but everyone's just kind of going through their day and enjoying it. We decided to get some fresh juice, and they were freshly squeezed right in front of us. I've been looking at lemon trees the entire hike, and I had to get some lemonade. Let's go find some lunch. Look at these pesto and crazy sandwiches on Fukosha. We'll wait to take a bite. This pesto is incredible. So pesto is actually from the region. Um, so you see it on everything here, which I will not complain about because it's probably one of my top five favorite foods of all time. I absolutely love it. I would put it on anything and they put it on everything here. So I'm extremely happy. These were seven euro. Um, we're just kind of sitting on a step right now, gonna enjoy it. We're gonna explore the city a little bit more and then we're gonna head on to the next one. Way in the distance right there, that is, is Monterosso where we started. We're headed to Corniglia. It's about an hour and 45 minute hike. It's supposed to be easier than the first one, so it should be a good time. Before coming here, we knew that the whole place was a national park, but we didn't really realize how many trails there were. Um, there's signs for them everywhere. Honestly, if we had known, we probably would have packed hiking boots and stayed longer. But for now, we're just really enjoying this main hike. Back on the climb. You want to carry me? You got this. 
Who could say no to a halfway smoothie? Not us. This was an unexpected surprise. We clearly couldn't wait. We finished our juices almost. Um, but I highly, highly recommend stopping at this halfway point between Bernanza and Corniglia to get a uh, lemon slush with fresh orange juice. Garrett got a smoothie and it was good, but I think mine was better. For sure it was. We are halfway to Corniglia and there it is right there. And we are at the highest peak of the Blue Path, which is 208 meters above sea level. I'm excited. You want to lead the way? It's so far away, but yeah, so close. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so we just got off the trail. We're walking down this road, and we are headed into Cornelia. We're super excited. Uh, I think it took us about an hour and 45 minutes to get for, from Vernaza to Cornelia. Um, so what they advertise is about correct. It was a beautiful hike, stunning views the entire way. But now we're going to explore the city. Cheers. Cheers. Drinking a cappuccino at 3 p.m., which is frowned upon, but they don't. All right, so we've been exploring Cornelia now for about an hour. We walk through the streets. It's a very, it's it's one of the smaller towns, but it's very artsy. It has an artsy feel and it's very welcoming. I don't know, everyone's very friendly. I think this is a little bit quieter, which is nice. As we previously mentioned, this is unfortunately the end of our hiking. From this point back to Rio Maggiore, the trail is closed, so we will have to get to our last town, Manarola, by train. There is the train station which we're walking down to, and there is our next stop of Manorola. Garrett looks hyped. I'm just happy that we're walking down these steps and not up them. We definitely miss our train to Manorola. And the next train is in eight minutes. He had us running. We looked like psychos, but we made it, and there are definitely worse train stations to wait in. It's like being on a train station on a beach. We made it to Manarola. We're gonna walk through the city, explore a bit, hopefully grab some gelato, maybe a sandwich if I'm feeling hungry. Maybe and a limoncello spritz. Maybe a limoncello spritz. And then we will um, take the train back to Rio Maginoro, which I did not say that right, but where we're staying and go to the grocery store. Uh, we're trying, guys, we're trying. I think we've said every city like 15 different ways at this point, but we're, we're doing our best. Fish? So we were feeling a little hungry. We only had like one sandwich today and some fruit and yogurt for breakfast. And uh, we hiked for over three hours, so we stopped at Fuderia over yonder. Got us a couple of tuna sandwiches, and they didn't look that big originally. Um, so we got our own, but they are pretty large. So, but we got one one tuna with pesto, and then one spicy tuna sandwich on a white roll. I think this is the spicy tuna. They don't know though. All right, this is my kind of mutilated sandwich because Garrett ate most of it before he realized it was my sandwich, which is typical. Um, but it has lettuce, tuna, um, I think uh, like a mozzarella, uh, a crispy onion, carrot, and some sauce. Kind of like an Asian Italian mix, but very good. Kind of wrapping up our time here in Manarola before we head back to Rio Maggiore via train to go to the market and buy some supplies for dinner. However, our final thoughts, or initial thoughts really, because we were only here for a little over an hour, um, it's a really good place to get a tuna sandwich if you like uh, seafood and you like sandwiches. It's a very good place to get that. And it's also a good place to have an aperitivo with a view. A really good view. last train to head to Rio Maggiore. We're gonna head to the market before we head back to our apartment to buy some ingredients so we may cook dinner tonight. All right, we're gonna go into the Alimentari and Alimentari is kind of like a market. They have fresh produce, meats, some goods like cheeses, 
uh, fresh pesto in this case. So we're gonna do some shopping for dinner. Perfect. Do you have any prosciutto? Fresh prosciutto. Oh. Too many aperitivos. Headed on this beautiful walk back to our apartment. Quick shower after a day of hiking. We are rushing to the marina to hopefully catch sunset. Close to 360 degrees. Perfect views. The buildings behind us are just glowing in golden hour. The sunset is in front of us. Water is splashing up over the rocks. I mean, I'm so happy. Ending all five cities on our favorite aperitivo spot. And Garrett just eats the nuts. He loves the nuts. Okay, so we finished our aperitivo. You can tell that I'm feeling good after my limoncello spritz because I can say Rio Maggiore and feel slightly confident in the way that I'm saying it, but it's literally right down there. And so every time we come in and out of this VRBO, we constantly see these people and they always just look like they're having the best time. Oh, and before we cooked, I wanted to have some wine, but I didn't want to open an entire bottle. So I asked them if I can get a glass of Portofino to go, and they poured me, this is one glass. My head for reference, it's huge. So I'm not gonna drink this until we finish cooking because I don't want to create any, any kitchen fires or anything like that, but it smells amazing. For dinner tonight, we decided to cook instead of go out because we're going to be in Italy for up to 10 days. We have been eating out a lot and we've been spending a lot of money, obviously. So in order to do something different and spice it up a little bit, we went to the local market. And in Cinque Terre, pesto is a hot commodity. It is local to the region. So we decided to make pesto pasta. And I think we could probably sell the pesto pasta for 15 euro a plate. No. And the charcuterie board maybe for 10 euro a plate. So we're gonna enjoy this, and then we will probably pick up the vlog tomorrow. And we're heading to Roma. Ciao, Cinque Terre. Ciao. Thanks for a great time. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.